JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones and in the news, elderly St. Mary businessman shot dead. A 72-year-old St. Mary businessman is dead in a suspected case of murder and attempted robbery believed to have been committed in a district called Broadgate in the parish on Thursday evening. The dead man has been identified as Delaville Bambury, a Cambi operator and a resident of Interboil in St. Mary. Information received is that shortly after 6 p.m., Police received a report that occupants of a silver Toyota Pro box were seen firing shots at a silver pickup. A team of lawmen responded and upon their arrival, observed a silver Mitsubishi L200 pickup over a precipice. The assistance of the Anato Bay Fire Department was sought and a male occupant identified as Banbury was removed from the vehicle. Police said Banbury appeared to have sustained gunshot injuries to the upper body was taken to the Anotobe Hospital, where it was pronounced dead upon arrival. Cash amounting to $7.7 million was found in two bags at the scene. The police are searching for three suspects. Persons stabbed and shot during fight at dance in Runaway Bay. The Runaway Bay Police in St. Anne have launched an investigation into an incident in which persons were shot and stabbed at a dance in the parish. It has been reported that about 2 a.m. Friday, there was a dispute between two men at a dance held at New York City Sports Bar in Runaway Bay. The dispute reportedly escalated into a physical fight during which the men stabbed each other. During the melee, an explosion was heard and it was discovered that a female patron was shot in the back. The injured persons were taken to hospital where they were treated. An investigation has been launched into the whereabouts of the two injured men after they left the hospital without being discharged. Truck driver hospitalized following Mandeville crash. A truck driver has been hospitalized following a two-vehicle crash on the Winston Jones Highway in Mandeville on Thursday night. The crash involved a tractor trailer and a box truck. Preliminary reports suggest that the crash happened shortly after 8 p.m. It is unclear as to the cause of the accident. The impact caused the tractor trailer to go partially off-road. Trees stopped the heavy unit from going over a precipice. The box truck was extensively damaged. The driver of the mangled box truck was taken to hospital while the driver of the tractor trailer escaped serious injuries. The crash resulted in a periodic pileup of traffic on the usually busy roadway. Spanish Don man allegedly held with M16 to return to court today. Spanish Don resident O'Shane James, the first person to be charged with possession of an assault rifle since the enactment of the New Farms Act, is set to return to the Kingston Gun Court on Friday. He faces a minimum 15 years in prison before consideration of parole under the new act, which came into effect after a two-week gun amnesty ended on November 19, 2022. James was allegedly found in possession of an M16 rifle and 12 rounds of ammunition on December 9. It was the sole occupant of a vehicle pulled over during a stop-and-search operation involving a team from the St. Catherine South Police Division's Special Operations Unit. On his first court appearance, James was denied bail following an application by Lee Defense Counsel Tom Tavares Finson. St. Catherine South Police lists persons of interest in murder cases. The St. Catherine South Police have listed five men as persons of interest in relation to recent murders that have been committed in the parish. The men who have Elsha Park addresses have been identified as Jermaine Shaw, otherwise called Predem, Maria Thomas, a man known only as Gunnar Gunnar, a man known only as Kirk, and a man known only as Steady. All five men are being asked to report to the Portmore Criminal Investigations Branch by midday on Saturday, January 14. Additionally, anyone with information about the whereabouts of these men is being asked to call the St. Catherine South Police Station at 876-949-8422 or Crime Stop at 311. Phone thief accuses cop of trying to sink the thief them. An 18-year-old man who was charged after he allegedly attempted to steal a cell phone is accusing a member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF of harassing and trying to sink the thief them. The man, Kevon Russell, made the remarks on Tuesday in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court when he was hauled before Senior Parish Judge Lauren Cole Montague. The court was told that he attempted to swipe the woman's cell phone in downtown Kingston on Monday. Immediately after he was brought into the dock, to answer to the charge of simple larceny, Russell said, Me can't believe I walk one. You know what hungry me hungry? Me very guilty, my mother. He added that when he was arrested, police officers beat me up. Russell, who revealed that he's an orphan 
and he used to live at the Maxfield Park Children's Home in St. Andrew, said he now lives in the Coronation Market and Push Cart. He noted that the woman he took the phone from was not interested in taking him to court, but the police sergeant who arrested him insisted that he be charged. Him ever want to sink the teeth, them, Russell said, eliciting laughter from the people in the courtroom. However, the police officer said he heard a woman running and screaming teeth, which propelled him into action, and he gave chase to Russell, who was trying to evade the woman. Russell was shortly arrested and charged. He is to return to court on February 27 for sentencing. A fingerprint order was also made for him, and he was remanded. Security guard freed of murder charge. A security guard who was arrested last year for reportedly killing a man with a pickaxe was freed of murder at the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on Wednesday. 25-year-old Dwight Thomas of Arnett Gardens in St. Andrew was slapped with a murder charge after he went to the Trenchtown Police Station to file a complaint that he was being threatened. Interestingly, the complaint was about threats that were reportedly being made by relatives of the slain man. Thomas, otherwise called Boy Boy, was charged with the murder of 65-year-old Philip Lawrence, a resident of Arnett Gardens. The allegations are that Thomas and two men used a pickaxe to hit Lawrence in the head during a dispute over a land border on Mexico in Kingston 12 on August 30, 2021. Lawrence's relatives attempted to assist him after he was injured, but reportedly had to retreat after the men pulled guns at them. Thomas and the other men reportedly escaped in the area, and Lawrence was taken to the hospital, where he was pronounced dead. According to the investigators, they had been searching for Thomas since August 30, 2021. But on Wednesday, during the committal hearing, Thomas's lawyer, Kemo Robinson, while denying the allegations, argued that the issue of identification was in question. He submitted that there was a nexus between his client and a man identified as Grammy, who is accused of killing Lawrence. Robinson also argued that no identification parade was held. Following his submission, the judge ruled that no prima facie case was established and agreed with the defense that there was no connection between Thomas and the person who was identified as the killer in the prosecution's case. Attorney at law Matthew Sims also presented Thomas. Suspect charged following attack on JLP counselor in West Kingston. One of the suspects, who has been sought for last month's attack on Jamaica Labour Party counselor Jimmy Height in West Kingston, has been charged. Romario Brown, otherwise called Beanie, was charged Thursday following an identification parade. Brown, 25, has been charged with four counts of shooting with intent, possession of prohibited weapon, and unauthorized possession of ammunition. The Kingston Western Police on December 8 hired who is a Jamaica Labour Party councillor for the Denham Town area, was holding a meeting with residents along Chestnut Lane and Tully Plain when three gunmen opened fire at him and ran towards North Street. Members of the Jamaica Defence Force who were posted at Bread Lane and North Street checkpoint in the Denham Town Zone of Special Operations heard the explosions and saw residents running in their direction. The soldiers challenged the men and this led to an exchange of gunfire. The men managed to escape. It was later discovered that Hyde's motor vehicle was damaged by bullets. More than 20 spent shells were found at the scene. Following an investigation, Brown was captured. The other suspects remain at large. Man accused of murdering attorney Graham, no show in court. The man was to stand trial for the 2012 murder of attorney Clover Graham in the Home Circuit Court in downtown Kingston today as absconded bail. Corinne Patterson had been arrested along with two others in 2012 for the murder. He, however, chose to go to trial, while the other two accused pleaded guilty and were sentenced. Patterson, who was present up to Thursday at the Supreme Court, had his bill extended when the matter was called up, with the expectation being that he would return for the trial on Friday morning. However, when Supreme Court Judge Justice Leighton Busey asked for Patterson to be brought in, he was told that the man was nowhere to be found. Attorney for Patterson, Zara Lewis, told the court that she had not been able to contact her client since Friday morning. Justice Busey, in ordering that a bench warrant be issued for the arrest of Patterson, adjourned the matter to Monday, January 16, when he will indicate his decision in the matter if Patterson is still a no-show. The accused can still be tried and sentenced in his absence based on the law. That decision rests with the trial judge. Newman urges transport operators to clear ticket balances by January 31. Delinquent operators in the public transport sector are being urged to pay their outstanding tickets before the full brunt of the law is brought to bear on February 1. This time, 
The plea comes from head of the Transport Operators Development Sustainable Services, Todd's Edgerton Newman, who has shifted his position from the call for a payment plan to clear the tickets owed by January 31, but at the same time has made clear that the sector is prepared to take the fight to the courts. National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang signaled this week that the government remains firm in its position that outstanding tickets must be paid or delinquents will face consequences. In response, Newman advised operators, owners, and other public transport association heads in a closed social media group that the association would seek legal advice from its attorneys, but in the meantime, operators need to seek counsel from the heads of their associations. All of us are in trouble at this time, both drivers and owners. Owners are in trouble because if drivers don't pay the tickets, they won't have any drivers. And drivers are in trouble because they owe outstanding tickets. We're, we're saying we want to contest it in court. So that's where we're going as transport operators, stated Newman, who earlier this week had threatened a strike by public transport operators. Speaking in the House of Representatives on Tuesday, Dr. Chang warned that there will be no hiding place or repeat traffic offenders under the new digitized ticketing system. He said the police would track down all delinquents and serve warrants for every unpaid ticket. Newman told colleagues, we have to pay outstanding tickets by January 31. On February 1, the new system will roll in. The interest of the minister and the cabinet is for the payments of the tickets. You won't attract the merit points. You won't lose your license. Everything else is placed on the back burner. Pay your traffic ticket. One good thing I gather from the presentation of Minister Chang is the fact that you can go to court with a lawyer if you want, he said, arguing that the government's interest is in its revenue and not the issues affecting the sector. Meanwhile, Todd's Director of Training and Development, Christopher Williams, encouraged members of transport associations and operators to start building a database of proof-of-ticket payments, along with other related information, such as records of the routes taken when tickets were issued, the main locations where they're ticketed, and the nature of offences for which tickets were issued. I'm approaching this from a balanced perspective. Go to other locations where there are no white lines and all yellow lines. For example, Constant Spring, and take some pictures or record the route. Present that as evidence to the National Works Agency, the mayor, and possibly the court. Take a picture of the receipt. Create a file on your smartphone for receipts and put those images there for future reference. Who is the police officer that is issuing the most tickets? What are the tickets being issued for? If you don't do your own research, everything becomes anecdotal and will not hold up in court. Managers of associations need to start collecting data. You are saving tickets and not saving receipts when you pay. Evidence is what is held up in court even if the system is flawed, Williams told operators. School renamed in honor of Veronica Campbell-Brown. Cabinet has approved the renaming of Troy Primary School in South Trelawney to Veronica Campbell-Brown Primary School. Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sports, Olivia Grange, who made an initial announcement in 2018, confirmed the change while speaking recently. The institution bore the name of the community it is in for 139 years. Cabinet has signed off on the name change of the school. We're just waiting on Veronica to confirm a time when she'll be in Jamaica for the ceremony to be done. In addition to the renaming of the school, the cottage will be refurbished, Grange confirmed. Campbell Brown, who was born in Clarkstown, Trelawney, but attended Troy Primary School through her agent, said she's aware of plans to rename the school, but has not been given any other information. As such, she has no comment at this time. The proposed name change is good news for Principal Kenisha McIntosh. We're all elated of the news that finally there's going to be this name change. It will put the name of the school on the lips of people worldwide. The naming of the school after this print icon will surely lift the profile of the school. The principal of the school, with 216 students, said. McIntosh acknowledged that Campbell Brown Foundation has contributed to the school over the years. There have been timely donations to the school. These include computers and tablets. Most recently, a multi-purpose court was constructed by our foundation. She was elated that the cottage will be refurbished but want more to be done. The cottage is the same age as the school and has been allowed to fall into a state of almost ruins. We appreciate the refurbishing. It would be good if along with refurbishing, bathroom facilities for teachers can be constructed. Presently, we showed the students, she said. The school board chairman is Kevin Grant. I don't have enough words to express my joy. I'm happy, not only for the renaming, which will bring notoriety to Troy, but also the refurbishing of the cottage. I'm sometimes scared when I see the children playing in the area. I have prayed that nothing happens to them. I'm very pleased, Grant expressed. Clinton Collins is a retired principal of the school. He is proud to have been Veronica's first athletic coach. I never saw this day when the school be renamed in her honor. She richly deserves the honor. 
I'm sure Troy will occupy an even more important spot on Trelawney's landscape and profile, Collins expressed. Colin Jr. Gage is a counselor for the War Subdivision in which the school falls. It is richly deserving and a timely addition to Troy's profile, Gage added. In sports news, reggae girls ranked third in CONCACAF. Jamaica's reggae girls are currently ranked third in CONCACAF, according to the latest edition of the CONCACAF Rankings Index. This comes on the heels of the team's qualification for back-to-back -back FIFA World Cups, having whipped Haiti 4-0 at the CONCACAF Women's Championships to secure their spot in July last year. The United States heads the list, while Canada ranks second. The other teams ranked in the top 10 are Mexico, Trinidad and Tobago, Costa Rica, Haiti, Panama, Cuba, and Antigua and Barbuda. Meanwhile, the reggae boys have remained sixth in the region. The rankings index serves as an up-to-date ranking system for national teams in North and Central America and the Caribbean as they compete in the Nations League, the CONCACAF Gold Cup, and other international competitions. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, Leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.